everyone, this is Nikki, and I'm here today with another project. We are going to do something a little different today with this set. I'm using iCrafters Mom Teapot, and I'm just going to use the flowers and the leaves for this. Today, I'm going to be making a card inspired by the cards for Ukraine. I wanted to use yellow and blue in my project, and I decided I'd like to play with some watercolor with these die cuts. So I'm going to take you through the coloring. We're going to talk a little bit about card therapy, and and we'll get started. So make sure that if you have not done it yet that you hit the subscribe and like button. Let's get into this video. First, I'm going to start with these new Zig Clean Color watercolor brushes. These are new to me. I got them for Christmas and I've been so excited to try them out. So I wanted to start with swatching them to see what the color was like because I'm trying to make this as a card for the Ukraine and so I want it to be a good yellow and blue and match well but I also really was hoping to do a little paler colors um, with my brushes so I'm checking out the different colors and adding water to them with this Altenew Fine Point watercolor brush and these brushes have water inside them so sometimes I dip it in a little bit of water just to get more on the tip but you squeeze them and water comes out which makes your watercoloring really easy. I don't profess to be a watercoloring expert, but I really do love it for therapy. I, I know that lots of people do coloring. Watercolor to me is very soothing and um, it's something that calms me down when the world is going crazy. I really like to do it. So I do have the paler of these markers. It may be hard for you to see that pale yellow color. It is really pretty. It's hard for me a lot of times with watercolor to get that pale of a color and I really like how that looks. I grabbed a couple that were more peachy in tone because I want to make some details on these flowers. So I'm trying these. They have like a little orange or peach to them that I thought would look nice on the details of the yellow flower. So I'm just swatching those out and then we'll get right into the coloring. I'm going to show you with the bright colors what the difference is. So I made flowers with bright colors and I made them with the pale colors. I went on and got some water on most of these flowers so that I could try to do this kind of quickly. When you put water on your paper and then you add a watercolor brush to it, it's going to pull that um, that ink. I don't know if you can tell, but it pulls the ink towards the center um, where it's already got some water. And I'm just going to go around the edges of my flowers and then I'm going to use the other brush and kind of fill in. And you don't have to be super careful with this. You can just kind of add some colors to areas that you like like this and then pull it in with a clean brush. So I'm not going to use my Zig color brush. I'm going to use this Altenew water brush to pull from the edges into the center. I'll pop this up on the screen, but the color that I'm using right here is the yellow 050. Um, Zig puts numbers on their colors, kind of like Copics, so that will help you find that color if you're looking for it. With watercolor, I like to do layers at a time, so I'm going to let this yellow layer dry and then I'm going to add more to it. And we'll skip ahead and do one of the light colored flowers so you can see the difference in the yellows. Here is the light colored flower. I'm working on it right now. And so what I'm going to do with the light colors is I'm going to go back in with the darker color yellow and use that for my highlights. So what's really nice with these zig pens is that they have such a fine tip. It's really easy to make extra details on your project. So I'm going to work on the center of this card and I want to make some veining in the leaves. Right now I'm doing this dry. So I'm just adding this marker dry and then I can soften it up with a little bit of water or I can leave it that way. So here I took my really fine brush, so my super fine watercolor brush with just a smidge of water. I mean, not much at all, and I'm kind of blending towards the center. So I'm trying to make those lines a little e more even because I did not lay them down perfectly, of course. And then I'm going to blend all of this towards the center with my really, really fine brush. So once I have this all blended, I'm going to let it dry again. I know this is quite a process. That's why you see so many flowers on my mat because you kind of need to let each layer dry completely before you move on to the next one. So let me show you what I did with this flower next. I used my bright yellow like I did in the center and I'm going to make veining for each of these petals and I am just barely. I mean, this has such a fine tip. I'm really working at making this very small so that you can see it better. So 
What makes petals look realistic to me when you add veining is to make sure that you follow the shape of the petal. And this goes for any shape flower. Following that curve, um, since flowers don't have straight lines, really makes a difference. I'm gonna speed this up to try to show you how these lines go. I mean, they do take time, but when you see the result, I think you're gonna be so um, excited at how much more interest your flowers have. So I always wanna add something extra to what I'm doing. And this is just a way to make those really stand out. So with this speeded up, you can see how much of a difference. And I feel like even from far away and close, it just looks really cool. So next, let's add some dots to the center. And the last detail that I put on this was to add some dots in the center. So I'm adding these dots because I feel like this looks like a sunflower. And sunflowers have all those little seeds in the middle. I could go and do this in something dark, but I'm trying to keep my color scheme very yellow and blue for Ukraine. Here's the up close of that final flower. Look at the blue leaves. I, I, I wanna call them greenery, but I'm using blue. <laughs> so this blue is cobalt blue, and it's 031 is its number. It is a gorgeous color, and I felt like it really matched what I was going for with my Ukrainian card. I don't normally do my greenery <laughs> or my leaves um, in a blue color, but I've seen such beautiful cards out on Instagram where people really coordinate their colors and just make their leaves any color they want to. And I've been wanting to try that for a long time, so this gave me that opportunity to um, kind of branch out a little bit and try making my leaves in blue instead of green. And so I'm going back, I've done a base color and now I'm kind of outlining my leaves because I want my leaves to be lighter on the inner portion than they are on the outside. So I'm adding a little bit more color and then I'm bringing some more water in to get a good blend here. And then we're gonna have to let this base color, once I get the base color to what I want it to be, we're gonna need to let this dry before we add in our veining. To me, veining on leaves is pretty simple because it has kind of a definite pattern. I still like to follow the curve and I'm using that super fine tip on this brush very lightly. I don't want these to be big, thick lines because they're nice, delicate leaves. And I try to, when I make my initial line, follow the curve. And you can see on that one, I made a little mess up, but you are not gonna notice it at all. I can easily cover that up or I can use some water to kind of blend it in. And it just looks so good in the final product. I'm gonna speed this up so that you can see. And I do, yes, it does take some time because I add some individual veining on each one. I try to keep it at an odd number of the little extra veins that come out, but I don't always get there and I'm just doing the best I can. Isn't that what we're all doing? Just doing the best we can. Um, so I am going to put this on there and maybe that's part of the therapy of watercolor is, you know, it can be imperfect and still look amazing. That's what's so nice about card making is it all comes from your heart, so it's perfect the way it is, no matter what you feel like your skill level is. So to make the background of my card, I'm gonna use these same colors. And you see, I've just kind of sketched a circle. I went and cut a circle out um, of the front of my card and I just made a rough sketch of it. And I'm just making kind of an ombre look. I love doing this. It'd probably be easier with a much bigger brush. I just had been using this brush and decided that would make it easier. And you see how the water, if there's excess water, it wants to fade up into that next level. So just make sure you go back over it a few times and till it's good and dry. You can add more color if you want to at the bottom um, and pull it up. But I like mine to have kind of that striped look. I don't know why, I just love this look for some reason. It just gives it a little bit of interest. And so I try to go from darkest to lightest and I just try to make those um, layers not look super stripey, but I'm okay if you can see kind of how the stripes go through them. And then I'm gonna let this dry. And yes, I've used pencil on it, but once I've painted this and gone over it a few times, the pencil comes off very easily. I was a little worried, well, maybe once it's got the water paint on it, it's not gonna come off as easily when I first started Started this and now I know you got a good eraser that is coming off um, pretty much no matter what you stamp over it. 
This is the eraser that I used. It's a mono eraser and I will include it in the description below. But uh, look at how easily pencil erases off of this Canon watercolor paper. So I've painted over it, it's dried, and now I'm just erasing my pencil line so I can put this behind the main panel of my card. And you'll never know that that's how I did it. It's pretty cool. So since I was making this for the Ukraine, I'm trying to come up with sentiment that makes sense and that I looked through all of my stash and I could do something like sending hugs and that kind of thing but I thought that believe would be nice and so this is believe that you can and you will so this comes from a pink fresh set and I want to show you a quick trick that I use especially when using die cuts of words or other small things, I go on and die cut the back. So this is the outline of Believe. And I leave it stuck to the same piece of paper. So I've got underneath um, these magnets, I have a sticky piece of Sizzix paper. And I've still got my die cut in this little area. And then I'm going to fit my stamp to it. And really look around it, make sure I've got it lined up. This way you don't accidentally bend your stamp and it doesn't fit in your outline, things like that. Look how perfect this one turns out. It fits perfectly. I'm going to stamp it one more time. I really love this VersaFine Claire. It is a very dark ink. The name of the ink color is called Nocturne, and it is my favorite for stamping a sentiment. It just really is the blackest black I've seen. So um, I stamped it with that, and then now I can use my little craft pick and pull this out of here, and it will be all together and stamped perfectly on this die cut. So to make the background, I used the iCrafter Buffalo Plaid stencil and I dry emboss that on a piece of white paper. Now what I'm doing is looking at how I'm going to line this sentiment up. I feel like it's easier to go ahead and put your sentiment in the center before you start putting all of your flowers on. That way you can know what is center and have it um, a defined area where that's going to go and not accidentally cover that up with flowers. So once again I'm using that Versa Fine it's in the color Nocturne, and I'm just going to stamp the little part of the sentiment. I have not attached the Believe yet. I'm just putting it in where I'm going to put it, and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp these little words. Since I didn't put the dry embossing in this video, I'm going to add a card that will pop up in the top right corner. And you can click on that if you want to know how to dry emboss with stencils. It's got lots of ideas and it really can make some fun backgrounds with not a whole lot of effort. So now I have done all of these different flowers. I'm using my tea ruler to get my Believe in the exact correct place and I'm using a glue tube for that. And then now I'm going to add the flowers. So you can tell with these flowers, of course I did a lot of these off camera because I didn't want to overwhelm you with the colors. But you can see that's my first sunflower that we went over and then I did some of the different um, varieties. I did use the darker yellow on some of these and the lighter yellow and you'll be able to see that when they're next to each other. Here's my theory for lining up flowers and making flower collages. Pretty sure this is most people's theory, but I wanted to tell you to be sure. So I play with it. I don't start gluing anything down until I like my numbers and what I've done. So I try to keep it at odd numbers and you'll see I'm going to flip this around so that I can be even more, but I want my total amount to be odd and I want to make sure that it just looks balanced um, with colors. These two lighter ones in the bottom lower left feel like they need to go together and then these darker colors feel like they need to go together and for some reason I always feel like you're anchoring your sentiment by putting more at the bottom so people look at that so right now I have seven things around this and I think I'm just going to do two flowers on top and use my little um, blue leaves here to make this an odd number so I'm going to put three around it to keep that at number five and then down below is number seven. Guys, I'm so worried about the Ukraine. I want to send out prayers and thoughts, and I hope they see these things on social media and know that we are there for them and praying and hoping that the, everything will turn out correctly over there. So if you have the chance, please go through the links below in the description. If you're ordering anything today, running a channel is not free, and it definitely helps support me. I appreciate all of you so much. So if you're interested in helping the Ukraine and you're a card maker, simply flooding the internet with images is a great 
plan, but also if you're interested in monetarily supporting some of the efforts that are going on, you can, the Ukrainian card drive on Instagram has a lot of different charities listed. I will also put some in the description of this video so that you will be able to get to them very easily. Have a great day, guys, um, and stay safe. Talk to you soon. Bye.